Hey everybody, welcome to Bog Gaming's State of the Game. This is Solus. Today we are looking at Stonehearth Alpha 16 Unstable. This was released on April 12th of 2016. And this is actually our second look at Stonehearth. I did another video when Alpha 10.5 came out. You can check it out. I'll throw the link up. Uh, Stonehearth is, just a quick reminder, a town building simulator with RPG-like aspects. And I once heard it described to me as you are building the towns that the old RPG heroes of, of older games would come visit. And the way to set this game up is on a macro management level instead of micro. So I don't go around and tell you know, farmer harvest this crop or worker chop down this tree. I kind of set up a an orchestrate a plan for these hearthlings, uh, which is what the uh, community has taken to calling the little villagers. And you set up a plan and they just go about and do it right before your very eyes. And as you can see, I'm not doing anything and these guys are running to and fro, building houses, gathering crops, checking on the the eggs that the little chickens are laying. Oh, a merchant. Let's see what we got here. Uh, I'm gonna buy some stone. Thanks, man. Cool. Okay, so this town is called Willow. And you can see kinda how I have it set up and all my little stats. And they've added a bunch more stats in the newer versions. I kinda broken it down a little bit more. And I've been playing this game, this specific town about, oh, I'd say, 10 to 12 hours. And I've got a pretty good, nice little town going on. It's not too bad, I would say, myself. There are some fantastic ones up on the Stoneheart Discourse of people that build just insane things. But, all right, let's go over and see what's new. We'll go alpha by alpha and kind of check it out. So, we'll start with alpha, to le alpha 11. And I think probably the most sought after thing at the time was a way to get rid of stockpiles like you used to have to build these little stockpiles and just like cover your whole freaking map with them just to get all your items and everything in there so radiant entertainment the creators of Stonehearth, decided hey we're gonna make these crates so you can put items in there and clean up your town and look so much nicer so we can kinda take a look inside and see what's in here apparently there's an omelet just sitting in this crate along with an entire chair <laughs> But, so I can set up a little storehouse and kind of keep everything a lot tidier. I've got all these boxes full of goodies. Uh, the blacksmith and the mason have a bunch of their own little things to hide their metal bars and weapons and cool stuff in there. Uh, Alpha 11 also introduced the cook. So what the cook does is I can kind of show you a little workshop inside my little tavern here is the cook takes raw foods and creates stews and breads and roast meat and pot pies and kind of uh oh what do we got here oh my gosh giant tree people uh, we'll get a little sneak peek into, into the new combat here gather my forces and send them forth and have my archer retreat run man there's too many for you. Get out of there. Let's. There you go. A footman will run in and distract him. Where are you going? All right. Here comes the. Oh, uh, it is an alpha, so there's still some bugs, but it doesn't seem to be causing any issues. So we'll keep going. Uh, oh boy. Glad the cleric's in there. So we got two footmen, cleric, archers, shooting DPS range. Where is my knight at? Need him to gather some aggro. Here he comes. Slow as molasses. Oh boy. Alright. Cool little battle. <laughs> Alright. So while we're watching this epic battle unfold, uh, the cook takes your kind of raw foods that aren't very nutritious and creates uh, basically higher level foods out of them. So you get more points to go towards your editable score, which is this guy right here. And that allows you to attract more hearth hearthlings is basically the idea. So to even get to the higher levels of hearthlings, like in the 20s, you really, really need a cook 
to make better foods for everybody. Man, this battle's really going on. You are really close for an archer. The cleric's in there. Deep. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Let's pull you back a little bit. Let him go. Here we go. They almost got one of them. Go, Archer. All right. So Alpha 12. We'll just kind of keep them in view as we back away. Added new workbenches. So it looks like they got that in hand. Oh, yeah. And leveling up. Nice. So it used to be that each um, <laughs> profession that was a crafter could only create like one little workbench. So they had the normal workbenches and they could just build off anything they want after that. In Alpha 12, they added the need for a second workbench to make more complex crafts or different crafts. You actually need to build multiple stuff and you'll see them run from each one the ones they need so like the blacksmith will actually smelt the ore here and the ingots and use those ingots over here to build weapons and armor and whatever let's see what happened knight got to level two Ooh, got an aggro shout that's cool uh... archer has more damage that's cool i'll take that cleric has more healing aura take that too right on Okay. Let's work, fellas. Oh, better loot all this stuff on the ground. Take all my loot. Oop, I missed. Maybe. There we go. Grab it all. Have my workers come get it. Good job, buddies. You guys did good. Did good. All right, so Alpha 12 also added uh, kind of better world generation. And the shepherd can now... Oops, they're hungry. Uh, <laughs> you can get more than just sheep. You can get these little guys called Poyos. Uh, I still think they should be called Buck Bucks, their previous name, but fine. We'll go with Poyos for now. And, oh, the cleric's giving him a buff. That's funny. And you can also get rabbits. So each one produces a different resource that you can use for food or for, like, sheep you can use for crafting for the weaver to make stuff. All right. And, oh, and Alpha 12 also introduced the ability to plant your own trees when you want to. I'm not needing to do that now. I've got plenty. But you can do it. It's pretty cool. All right, daily update. Oh, I do not have enough food. The recent patch, I think Alpha 16, seems to have reduced the uh, quality of food as a, as a whole. So you need more to get more hearthlings. So I'm working towards it. We'll get there. These guys are almost done with this house. I was working on. All right, Alpha 13, jumping on. They added a whole new faction called Raya's Children. They are kind of a desert-dwelling uh, wily merchants that have a completely different play style. So the Ascendancy, which is these guys in the green, start really, like, seem to be the easiest group to start with. They focus on wood and stone, while Raya's Children, you have to dig into the dirt and use clay and use a new class called the Potter to build all their stuff. There's a very specific feel, as you can see, looking at all clay bed, simple clay chair. I, For me, they're a lot harder, but I'm just kind of used to the ascendancy. But the desert biome is pretty cool, and we'll check that out later. All right. Uh, they also introduced the Hearthling Therapist, so you can kind of see what everybody's doing now and tell them what they can and can't do. Like, don't do your job, just haul. Or, hey, you shouldn't be building. I want you to work solely on crafting. Uh, or you shouldn't be mining. You could suspend entire rows if you want to. It's also interesting the ability to just click through people and zoom to them and see their stats at a glance. Like this footman's just got baller stats all over the place. Um, all right, let's move on to Alpha 14. The first combat update since forever ago was adding different monsters and the party mechanic which you saw earlier which each time you add someone to a combat class they jump into these parties, automa parties automatically and you can kind of take a look here and see who's all in a party and you can use these controls to move and attack 
and tell them to defend an area or cancel it. Uh, it's made it a lot easier to kind of get groups together and tell them where to go. So like I can send everybody over here and they'll gather up around this banner. Uh, it also introduced the herbalist. I don't have an herbalist right now because I promoted my last one to a cleric. So you have to have an herbalist to get a cleric. And once it reads, so once an herbalist reaches level two, I believe, they start at level zero. You can become a cleric, and then you can start using magic. But the herbalist builds like potions and bandages, and uh, the, obviously the cleric tomb to heal people when they get hurt. They can run back and take a nap. All right, so yeah, there they are. <laughs> we'll cancel that order. You guys can go back to patrolling. All right, Alpha 15 was all about performance, and it shows. Uh, I used to barely be able to get 16 hearthlings on on a game without it starting to really sputter, and I had to turn down the graphics. Now I'm up to 24, and you can go as high as 50. They did a lot of bug fixes, a lot of optimization. Uh, buildings can get built a lot more exotic now. Like I used to, no way I could have built this in the earlier alphas. It would have just died on me trying to build this cool little ledge here. Or at least I think it's cool. Uh, and the ziggurat would have exploded, I think. Just completely crashed the game, but it turned out all right, and they're still building windows for it, but <laughs> it's coming along. And if you take a peek inside, there's a little shrine to the three bunny gods. Um, they did have to add it what's an inventory cap to kind of help people from hoarding. So the bigger your town is, the more inventory you can get. Some people didn't like it, but it hasn't affected me so far. You can kind of see uh, in your inventory screen how much you have, but I'm not even anywhere near the cap, and I feel like I have a ton of items. All right, and to help combat people from hoarding as well, they added these little merchant stalls. You can call a merchant, pops out of nowhere, and you can go in. They don't usually have much to buy, but you can sell all your excess crap. Like, for instance, I don't think I need 17 rabbit pelts. Oh, those poor rabbits, I'm a, I'm a monster. All right, so, and last but not least, is the current alpha, the unstable release of Alpha 16, was all about combat. They added a bunch of new classes. It used to be you could just be the footman, and that's it. Now they've added the knight, which is the tank character, who, as you saw, kind of draws aggro. He doesn't do much damage, but, man, he can take a beating. The cleric, which is a must-have class once you get a little bit further into the game. Uh, I tried playing it with just three fully decked out footmen and they got demolished so definitely need healers and tanks the party mechanic is extremely important in the later areas of the game uh, obviously she heals she has a healing aura which is pretty pretty awesome uh, here's a footman they are the class everyone has known and seen that has played Stonehearth. They have been upgraded to not only being the basic military unit, but they're also kind of considered the fast melee DPS. They're the only group that can use two-handed weapons. And everyone's favorite, the archer. This little guy has been a highly requested feature in the Stonehearth community for a long time. And here he is. Oh man, you just ran right through him. That was really rude. So he kind of hangs back, does DPS. He knows to hang back from combat a little bit, which is kind of smart. And he does a ton of damage. You can also add special arrows to him. Like he's using spiky arrows right now, which slows enemies. And you can kind of toggle through the arrows he has, or his regular arrows. And honestly, it's been pretty cool to see the dynamic that they've created in this game. They've added also a ton of new monsters that are a lot harder. So if you aren't using the party mechanic, you will get messed up. And it's kind of been nice to see. But seeing the party mechanic and just seeing the difference and how well you do in combat when you use the variety of classes uh, kind of adds a cool reason to make sure you get everyone, every type of class. All right. So let's uh, go through my little gate here, which is looking pretty cool. And go take out this crypt. Necromancer crypt, also a new addition. So let's go for it. So you can kind of see the party controls. It shows them all selected, running into combat. The footmen, at a certain level, get a speed buff. So they're kind of always the first into combat, which is sometimes terrifying because they're not the most oh, autosave. 
most uh, highly armored, even with the iron armor. Uh, give me five. If you make me five bird bass, I'll be back to give you one giant bone mace. Uh, yeah, that's actually not too bad. I don't know why you need five bird bass, but hey, man, whatever floats your boat, take it. So you'll see these guys run in, and as soon as they hit that crypt, the necromancer and his lackey comes out. And he's got a cool little scythe there. Let's take a look at this. Little battle. Should be well in hand here. What are you doing, Archer? You're supposed to hang back. Cleric. She just never made it, I guess? Eh, yeah, this guy's got it. I don't need to be there, I guess. Alright. <laughs> and boom. Done. Alright. An example of controlling the parties. I mean, you saw one earlier. A little more epic of a battle. But I'd figure how show you how you could go out and do it on your own. Ooh, they got loot. Gold! Alright, so let's take a moment and jump over and check out Raya's Children that I have built from Raya's Children. And this is the desert biome, as you can see. A lot different. Very sparse on the whole tree front. Uh, but lots and lots and lots of places to get sand. I found this cool little alcove to hide in. You can see they have a lot different aesthetic to their buildings and even to their clothing. They wear a lot of red. And you can see right here the starting class is the potter. So I've had a lot of fun playing Rise Children, but I think I still prefer the Ascendancy just because I'm used to it. But yeah, so they've added this. I'm looking forward to the Viking faction, or the Northern faction as they're called, in the future. And oh boy, wolves. So this the team streams three times a week still. So they stream Tuesday and Thursday evenings and Wednesday usually in the mornings. Uh, Stone Hearth is available on Steam and I think Humble Bundle. I can only say good things about the development of this game. It's only gotten better and the development's only gotten faster. So if you're looking for a completely bug-free game that is finished, I'd stay away. But if you're looking for a game that's already fantastic to play and is only being diligently worked on by a team that really listens to the community, I'd say give it a try. All right, guys. Thanks for... Oh, gosh. You're dead. You're so dead. <laughs> thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll, we'll catch you next time.